All right, let's let's go. Uh, I will do what I can here to let people in. Um, we're going to do this a little bit different, but welcome to the Sales Assassins Inner Circle. Um, obviously, I'm Todd Coughlin. Um, I've got some notes. Uh, so in the past, I, I well, let's who I'm kidding. I, I'm still going to do it. I will go off on a tangent. I'll bring some fire, but really I'm feeling like I need to do some training today. Um, and I'm going to dig into buyers. And there's a proven process built around buyers that I think needs to be revisited today. It, it's it's what is it from a relevancy standpoint for today? So hopefully we're going to be able to dig through that. Um, if you have any questions, awesome. Otherwise, you know, I don't know. Sit back, count fun, um, have a beer, depending on where you're at, um, eat some food, uh, whatever. All right? We good? Hi, Miranda. How are you? Hi, Ali. How are you? I, lo I, I love to be able to see your faces, by the way. Hey, Josh, what's happening, buddy? We spent a lot of time talking about listings, 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 and they're important, um, especially when the inventory is, is a challenge. It's been a challenge for a number of years. And um, it's changing. Like whether whether we want to admit it or not, it's changing. It's changing right before our very eyes. Uh, if, 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 you, if you guys pay attention to what's happening with the data, one of the things that Peter was just talking about was be a maven. Well, what is a maven? Uh, a maven is somebody who is actively pursuing knowledge and wisdom for the benefit of others, to connect others with the answers. Well, part of being a professional, not an amateur, by being a professional in our space is we got to know what's going on. <clears throat> And, 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 I, and I don't mean CNN or, or Fox News. I'm talking about what's really going on. Data-driven information. And there's all kinds of areas where you can access. I'm going to give you a couple of little tidbits just to get it started in the day. But, you know, when <clears throat> when the jobs report came out a couple of weeks ago, what did it mean? Well, everybody thought that we were going to create 250,000 jobs. We only created $150,000. I don't know about you, but I, that doesn't mean anything to me. Well, we, we, we thought that, that rate wages were going to increase almost 1%. Uh, or maybe it was 0.7%. I don't remember. <clears throat> and instead, they were they only raised 0.2%. Well, it sounds like they went up. What does that mean? Well, what it means is it was bad news for the consumer. <clears throat> and inflation exists when there is good news for the consumer, when there's good news for, for buyers and sellers and employees and all of those things, good news, that means there's more money in the market. There's more jobs in the market. When the number says that the unemployment rate went from 3.6 yeah, to 3.9%, is, is that good news? Bad news. It's bad news for the consumer. Bad news for people that that require a job to pay their, their bills. Well, what does that mean to the real estate market though? What that means to the real estate market is that it, less money or, or, or less belief that there will be money in the future, well, people will spend less money. And that they spend less money, there's less money going after the goods that are available. When there's more money going after goods, that's inflation. That drives up prices. When there's less money in more goods, that means the prices will go down. It's just sort of the supply and demand. Well, when the inflation goes down, interest rates will also typically go down. Now, we talk about, hey, it's a seller's market. It's been a seller's market for a long time. Got inventory problems, got inventory problems, got inventory problems. But y'all, those things can change overnight. If the right set of circumstances exist, and we need to be able to to be able to tell that story, we also need to be eyes wide open that things can change, and things are changing. Which is why I really felt like today I wanted to take you through, you know, like hey, what. What we need to be focused on certainly is listings. And I think we've talked about this before. If you're not getting one listing every single month, you're in trouble. Like that's a minimum. And, and, and if you're one of those people that gets 10 listings each month, then you need to do 11. Okay. 
Like you just need to get one more listing. That needs to be your absolute 100% focus. Now with those listings comes buyers though. And, and for, for those of you that have been in the business for longer than 12 seconds, you remember when you have multiple offers on a listing. Well, if you're representing a buyer, that means that you've got to be the best buyer and the best buyer's agent in the marketplace in order for them to win because your job isn't to show people property. Your job isn't to almost get them a home. Your job is to sell them the right property that changes their life. And there were a lot of people that were showing agents back in the day. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here. Hey, Jens, do you mind? Can I, can I make you a co-host in that way? If anybody logs in, it, can you just let them in for me? No. I All right. So how do I do that? Yeah. Does that mean you can kick people out too? <laughs> you read it. Yeah. 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 Uh, huh. Well, Suede, uh, it, evidently I made you um, the co-host. <laughs> so could you do that? Do you mind? Uh, no, he can't do that. <laughs> um, it's very strange. Sorry, you guys. I'm, you would think with all of my experience and I would be able to do this in pretty short. Yeah, no, can't do it. Sorry, Jen. You're out. Okay. There we go. All right. So I want to talk about the modern day buyer proven process, right? I'm going to use new strategies and I'm going to use old strategies. I like new school and I like old school just because old school. Well, listen, if we're being honest, old school became old school because old school worked and it passed the test of time. All right. So we're going to deal with some new school and some old school strategy strategies. There are three things that we need to do. Number one, we've got to activate buyers. Then number two, we've got to engage those buyers. And then number three, we've got to close those buyers. And listen, I'm going to talk sales because I'm talking to sales people, but I want to be perfectly clear. Sales professionals help buyers get what they want. That's a good thing. Sales amateurs help buyers give them what they want. That's the difference here. We're sales professionals. Our entire goal is to make sure that we become the assistant buyer, that we help the buyer get what the buyer wants. Period. End of story. End of story. Okay. All right. So... What I want to make sure as we get into this is I want to get some agreement and I'm going to walk through maybe some parts of the process that we don't normally talk about, All right? And I'm going to, listen, I'll get into strategies. I'm going to get into the tactics. I'm going to get into the minutia of it all because I think this is a great opportunity for us to do some training. Um, but I need to make sure that we're all clear that we cannot, when, when times change, we change or we get changed. Does that make sense? How about this? I, I need to get you some agreement here. In the chat box, if you if you believe what I'm saying, I want a thumbs up. Now listen, don't be bashful. If you don't believe what I'm saying, I want a thumbs down. But when times change, things change. You're either going to change or you're going to be changed. The saying is, you're either growing or you're going, right? And when we talk about change, like if we're being honest, change is the only constant. Like that's the thing. And rather than being afraid of the change, I might suggest that we actually lean into the change. Like there was a period of time where you didn't have to change. All you had to do was have somebody that could fog a mirror and then you had to have somebody that could fog a mirror, release contingencies or God forbid not have any contingencies. And then they would have to just overpay for whatever it was that they wanted to buy. 
God willing, you, you, you'd be the chosen. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption. I'm gonna get you right back to the video, but uh, most of you know me as a real estate broker or maybe somebody who's, who's built and scaled one of the fastest growing sales organizations in the country. What you may not know is that I also work with other sales professionals and leaders that are looking to grow and scale their businesses and just live badass lives. The one place that I have everybody start, the very first spot is the lethal scripts for the sales warrior. I'm gonna give you one for free today just so that you can get a little taste of what it is that we're doing out there. So click on the link below, we'll send you the information and let's get back to the video. I, I, I said something the other day that didn't make a lot of people very happy, but you know, sorry, not sorry. Uh, there was a period of time where you could have literally been a fast food drive through clerk and sold real estate. Like that's how easy it was. And those, those just aren't these days. That's just not how it works today. And the ones that lean into that change, the ones that say, hey, listen, I, I totally agree. Change is the constant. In order to, to, to survive, much less thrive in a market like this, I'm going to have to change. I'm going to have to go all in on the plays that work. And, and if I haven't been in the business long enough, I'm going to need to learn some of those plays from somebody else that has been in the business, that has won in this business. Hey, if I've been in the business for a period of time, if we're being completely honest, last five years, it's been a completely and totally wonky market. I may have to, I may have to relearn some of the things that that I've I've forgot over the time. Right? We are going to go through this process step by step by step, and I I need you all to sort of lean into this idea that. If change is constant, then that means that for every change, there's an opportunity. But here's the thing, the opportunity is really hard, right? And in the area that I fear is the part that gets missed the most is this conversation about hard set. Listen, you're in sales. Over the last five years, we've sort of been lulled into sleep, right? That that we, you know, you don't have to really compete that hard. And, and if we're being honest, we be, we do things, maybe we don't do things, but it's for the greater good. I may, I may be required to do something that I don't really want to do, but I, I do it because it's the greater good. And like, this is a collective, and this is a society thing. And, and I just have to tell you, that's not sales. Sales is competitive. And you have to make the determination that you're going to compete. When the market goes from 6 million units down to 4 million units, which is what happened last year. And by the way, we're down even more this year. When the market does that, it means there's less food. And I get it, like sympathy and empathy and all of those things. Like I care deeply for people. And yet what often times I see is I see I see sales professionals sacrificing their own families and their own family dreams for like the greater good and that's just not sales <laughs> kind of sorry to be so blunt about it but the bottom line is in sales you eat what you kill and yet few people will actually hunt. Few people will roll up their sleeves and say, oh, hell no, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to go out. I'm going to knock on doors, even though I hate knocking on doors. I'm going to make phone calls, even though I hate making phone calls. I'm going to ask people whether or not they want to buy or sell real estate, even though I hate having this conversation. I'm going to do what's necessary because the pool of food is smaller and I will be gosh darned if I'm going to allow the market to dictate how much my family eats we're going to go out and hunt that is sales title of the book i put on here just because i think it's funny but tenant sales people have skinny jits y'all i proverbially i want my kids to be fat i think you want your kids to be fat i don't think any of us want to go to work all day so that we can be one of the 90 percent that don't make it or or maybe 
We're lucky enough to make the 10% that do make it, but that average one makes $43,000. That is not life changing stuff. And I'm telling you right now, sales will change your life. There are people on this call, I'm looking around, that have had their lives changed. I don't exist as I exist today if it wasn't for the gift of sales and the gift of com competitiveness. And I have asked many folks that I come into contact with, how would your behavior be different if your life depended on it? How would you behave in sales? How would you treat your business? What would you do differently or what would you not do if your life or your children's lives depended on you succeeding? There are things that we are all doing or not doing, but that's the heart set that you have to go into a market like this. Because as I said, the pie got smaller and you're going to have to take yours. You're going to have to take it. All right, so let's get into some training. Can I, can I, are we okay? Have I offended anybody yet? We're good? Go. No. We're good. Good. So they talk about no like, and trust. If you had to choose between those three, you choose trust. Then. Yeah. The challenge is most salespeople don't do that. And the reason they don't do that is because it's not because of they don't want to. Most salespeople have a desire to be liked. How many of you on this call are that person? Like, I just need to be liked. And so they lean on that. Yeah, okay, good. Well, for those of you that are, all right, good. It's going to be easier for you. For those of you that are like, I just need to be liked. Here's the problem, right? We all have this talent. You know the saying, right? Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Well, the same saying goes along with this, all right? Uh, trust builds likeness. It built, it beats its booty when the likeness doesn't have trust. Can it? See, trust is it. It's, it. it's great to like you, but, but, but look, here, I'll do it this way. If, if you have a surgery coming up and you're going to go see two doctors, okay, and I'm going to go see, you know, uh, uh, Jane, and Jane is a sweetheart. She is the nicest lady, and she's so sweet, so kind, got such an incredible bedside manner, and she's so polite, and she just cares, and she listens to me. Boy, I really liked you. And then I've got this other guy, we'll call him Jack, right? Jack over here is just an asshole. He's a Jack, you know what? Okay. And so I, he is not nice. He does not have a good bedside manner, but boy, oh boy, is that guy. He's the best in the world at what he does. Who are you choosing? You're choosing Jack every single time. And the same thing applies when it comes to real estate, especially when the market has changed, because what we're really looking for is somebody that's going to help navigate this chaos. And we've got chaos on the news. We've got chaos in the lead, chaos on the legal. We've got chaos, chaos in the economics. We've got chaos in the inventory levels. We've got chaos um, abound in negotiations and what we should do, what we shouldn't do, what is the mortgage going to do. All of these things are chaos. And so what I'm really looking for is somebody who I can prove that can provide me with trust. And yet we know what happens. We know exactly where we lean. Right? Here, watch this. When, when you look up Gallup Poll 2022, this is the group that we're in. How about that? And that's solid. Nice. Real estate sales professional, lawyers, insurance sales, politicians. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine that we're that low, but we are. Car sales people, <clears throat> that's the group. That's the group. And I get it. Like if you ask the average person about the average real estate agent, they would all tell you that they are, you know, all they all they do is cash checks and they don't work very hard and they, they drink their wine and throw their parties and and you know, like it's nonsense, right? They're 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 in it for themselves, they get paid too much, like all of this stuff. But here's the question what would they say after talking to you? Would they say the same thing? Because remember what I just said, ninety percent of the real estate professionals don't make it for years. 
Well, it would make sense that if you talk to one of those 90%, you're probably not going to get the same level of professionalism. You're probably not going to have that same level of trust with those people, nor should you, right? There's a reason they're not making it. And then you take that, the remainder, and then we're making $43,000 numbers. Like that's four transactions, maybe five, depending on the market, maybe six. Well, that's not enough. But in this organization, it's double digits. In most cases, it's three and a half times what the average real estate agent of the National Association of Realtors does. So after having a conversation with you, what are they saying? Wow, that dude really knew his stuff. Wow, she was quick, concise. She listened to me. Like, she's in it for me. Is that the kind of thing that you are conveying to them? Hey, just a quick little interruption. Um, as you know, I work with some of the best sales professionals and leaders who are looking to grow their businesses, build exceptional lives on the planet. And what I'm doing is I'm giving away $50,000 worth of coaching and training absolutely free. All you have to do is enter the drawing below, click on the link, Enter your information, tell us just a little bit about you, and you could qualify for $50,000 worth of free coaching and training. Let's get back to the video. I, I know they talk about building trust. I don't think you can build trust. I think you have to. And there's a saying, that which is tested is trusted. That which is tested is trusted. And so when we talk about how different ways to earn trust, how do you earn trust? Well, I think you need to know what to say. I think you know, need to know when to say it. I think you need to know how to say it. I think you need to be very good at what you say. I think you have to have an opinion. You've got to stand for something. I think these are all of the things. Listen, can I just say it this way? So each and every one of us has a core belief system. Some of you are Democrats. Some of you are Republicans. Some of you are independents. As an example, just to pick something really polarizing. Okay. The minute a Democrat who believes as Democrats believe is trying to walk the tightrope not to stand for something you know when you're speaking to somebody who is having a conversation with you and they're not being completely transparent about what they believe don't you how about this can i get a little hand in the chat box if you know exactly what i'm talking about we have to be who we are you are you, everybody else is taken. In order to build trust, you stand for your beliefs. The hell with everybody else's. By the way, 50% of the population, by the data, is on the liberal side. 50% of the population is on the conservative side. That's a lot of people. There's 8 billion people in, in, in the world. There's 350 million in the United States. I'm pretty sure you can make a living just serving the half that you, you align with. Now, that's just an example. But in order to earn trust, you have to be trustworthy. People have to believe as you believe. And by the way, if you stand for something and you're not a jerk, like so many people in the political world, right? If you're not a jerk, there I, I, I tease that there used to be a time where you could actually go to a Thanksgiving dinner and disagree with your in-laws or your, your sister-in-law or whatever and nobody died. That's, that's like, that's the way it used to be. It could be that way again. We have to earn our trust. Now, there's a bunch of different ways. We talked about the scripts and the dialogues, you know, what to say, when to say, how to say it. There are other ways to do this, right? Did you get on social media? Listen, I know people right now that are like, hey, listen, I am providing great content, great value to, on on uh, real estate online. I, I put a video out once a month, once a week, whatever, and it's getting great engagement. They do it every day. Hell, do it four times a day. Every single one of you, you you've got to hear me when I talk about like your ability, what you've been given, the gift that you have today that we did not have in was this thing called social media. See, it used to be that you had to go spend your money to be able to get onto the airwaves. Of course, at the time, we actually believed the news. But today, we don't believe the news. We don't need to believe the news. Where everybody gets their news is on social media. Here's the cool thing. It's free. 
it's free for you too. A great way for you to build trust is by documenting maybe interactions, wins, uh, uh, common questions that buyers are having, but they don't need to be long. They just need to be consistent. Consistency wins the game. See, if you are consistent, people trust that you will be there again. Every time you talk about something that you've helped a buyer through, you are trusted as somebody that can solve problems if I'm a buyer. Some of you don't like this idea of like, well, I don't want to brag about myself. Y'all, if you aren't going to brag about yourself, fine, you are going to have skinny kids. Stop it. This is a competitive business. The lion tells his story or the hunter will. It's a competitive business. Go out and compete. Enough of the excuses. It's all out there. The people that are winning are doing winning things. They leave clues. We just need to mimic them. So building this trust is vitally important. There are a whole host. Like I could spend an entire day talking specifically about how to earn trust. But we know how to do it. We got to talk to our people. We got to talk to them often. We got to talk to them about the right stuff. Probably not forward. We've got to add value, add value, add value. Constantly adding value. We've got to sing from the rooftops what it is that we're doing to solve problems and help people to achieve their goals. Okay, so let's talk about activating buyers. We, we talked about the hard setup that you have to have. We have we've got to compete in order to be in this business and win. We got to compete. We talked about earning trust. Now we've got to activate buyers because listen, there's a lot of buyers out there. What what am I going to do to get them to raise their hand? And so I'm going to give you seven levers that you can pull to generate buyer leads. Okay. Uh, number one on the list is the database. It's the 12 month month touch plan. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the Distinctive Agent Show on YouTube and and search up past clients' fear of influence engagement. It's there, okay? But this is a a system that tells you exactly what you're going to do each and every month. You're going to call every single person in your database. You're going to have this conversation with them. You will be having relevant conversations. You'll be staying top of my and you will be earning trust second item would be deal of the week how many of you are doing a weekly email to everybody in your database nobody one go robin Does everybody know what deal of the week is? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go through a deal of the week right now. Is it a Sharon thing? I'll say it again. A Sharon thing? It doesn't matter. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Um I think this is something that's been around for decades, but it's it's what you're really trying to do is you're trying to show your value in in what it is that you do, right? And so for, for me, I want people to trust that I am up to date and I'm an expert on what's going on in the market. And one of the ways I can demonstrate that is by creating a deal of the week. My recommendation would be that you would you would pick three deals every week and they would be in a different segment. So I'll give you an example. Maybe you've got a condo, maybe you've got acreage, uh, maybe you've got single family homes, maybe you've got uh, you know, investment property, what, whatever, whatever you sort of like, I did pick two, three, four max, um, genres that I would be picking the deal of the week. Now the deal of the week is a very, very simple that you, this is meant to not be overdone. The idea here is that it needs to be something that feels very personal and it feels very like relevant to today. This is not something where I want it to be over, uh, 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 graphic, I guess, is is over polished. It's an email, and it, and it's just going to say like Coronado deal of the week, Point Loma deal of the week, uh, you, you know, um, Haley deal of the week. It's your area 
deal of the week. You always start with your area. The reason you do that is, especially in the resort markets, folks, you resort market people, listen up. If I want to go to Steamboat and I live in Chicago and I see an email that has Steamboat on it, I'm going to open it. You follow me? So this is important. It's the area followed by deal of the week. And then the meat of the uh, of the email is, is really quite simple. It's like, you know, hey, dear Christine, what's up? And I probably wouldn't do dear. I'd probably be like, hey, Christine. It's in my words, right? Because I'm just not that guy. Be like, hey, Christine, it's me. Uh, here's my weekly deal of the week. Here are the three items. And it's going to be like Seiko family home. Here's a four bedroom, three bath, 2,600 square feet. Um, and it's in this general area. And the price is $672,000. Uh, here's my condo. And it's it's text, no photos. Maybe I got some bold. Maybe I got some italics. Like it's, it's something that I would have typed out. Okay. And then at the end, it's to be like, Hey, if you want any information, any additional fresh information about any of these properties, just reply to the email. Have a great day. That's it. And I send it every single week. What will happen is those people who are actually interested, they raise their hand by replying and that's an activated. Make sense. Very simple. Like literally. This will take you less than five minutes a week. Um, early access to deals. Love this one. If you've gone through the whole proven process for listings with me, you, you know that part of what I'm doing between the time that I got the phone call and, and did the phone interview and the time that I went on the appointment I am sending out an email to my database that's trying to activate buyers saying, hey, listen, I'm going out on a po appointment, a potential listing. It's in this general area. It's a, this is about its size and blah, 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 blah. Don't really know much about the price yet. If you're interested in early access, this will you give me a favor? Just respond to the email. I'm activating buyer. So if you've got listings, great. That works wonderfully. And I could do that here. What if you don't have listings? Or what if you don't have any new listings? Well, listen, y'all are going on sales meetings probably every week would be my guess. You have wants and needs pages would, would be my guess in your social media. Like there's a way for you all to be sharing what's coming on the market. Just use somebody else's. Okay. Somebody else has got a three bathroom, two bath coming on the market and in the Highlands neighborhood. Fantastic. Take that and send the email to all of your people. Hey, we, now it's not me, we have a property coming on. It's in the Highlands market. It's about three bedrooms, two baths. Uh, it's gonna be about this price. It's, if you want some additional information, early access before it hits the market, reply to this email, activating buyers. Open house events, again, activating buyers. If I'm doing an open house or uh, well, may do it for me first. So if I'm doing an open house, I, that's part of my process. I'm going to send something out that invites everybody. If you're interested, reply back. I'm also going to do some door knocking, right? That's going to generate some stuff. But those are all great. But what if you don't have a listing and what if it's not you doing the open house? Well, again, every week there are people in your office, in your organization that are doing open houses. So take those, Okay send out the information and say, hey, here are the seven open houses that are done this weekend. Let me know if any of these pique your interest and I'll make sure that we get you some additional information. Simple assignment, right? The key here is not to have it overdone. Like, like less is more when it comes to these. All right, so let's dig into online for, for just a sec. I'm not going to dig into the whole social media thing right here. Again, we could spend an entire day, day talking about social media. What I would do is I would ask you to go and follow my social media accounts because right now I'm literally on that journey to grow relevant followership and engagement. And you can see specifically what it is that I'm doing, right? But Google My Business is the number one place to start. And if you don't have a Google My Business account, I'm, I'm, I'm going to slap your hand, right? That's number one. You got to get that done, period, end of story. I'm not going to ask you to 
out yourself, but you've got to get that done. Like right this second, you've got to get that done. Again, you go to the Distinctive Agent Show. We've got a training literally on how to create your Google My Business as well as optimize your Google My Business. So if you have one, but it's not optimized, there's some tips and tricks that you've got to go through. We could spend the next hour talking about that. We will. So Google My Business is it. The next would be the buyer guides. I love the buyer guides. I like them both organically, but I also like them paid. You can do something really simple, like, like $50 a week. Okay, so nothing from a marketing budget perspective. And what you're doing is you, somebody will click the learn or more information, but it, it, it acts as a funnel, as a lead funnel. So somebody says, like, I'm going to give you a free buyer's guide that guides buyers through everything they needed to know to get a home in this market. And they click on the information and it gets emailed directly to them, but you ended up with their contact information, which gives you the ability now to put them into your campaign or better yet to reach out and say, Hey, Josh, I see that you requested a buyer's guide. Um, I'm wondering if I might be able to help you with it's all the bike. You've got, you, you've created a reason to reach out a more purpose for having a conversation. And for those of you that are into the SEO space and really trying to optimize your websites, your blogs, et cetera, uh, for searches that are specific to buyers, I would go to seo.ai. It's a subscription service. I think it's 40 bucks a month. Um, and it will automatically crawl your website and make recommendations and, and adjustments to that um, uh, to, to help your page rank higher. Okay. So that, that, that's what I got for you on the online space. Uh, buyer centered events. Um, there are, so we, we've done an incredible job. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more, but we've done an incredible job, uh, making real estate seem so easy. Like there's really nothing to it and it's not true. Um, and truthfully, uh, if, you know, I, I wish we could take one of these and we'll give every buyer a whoop strap, um, and monitor their heart rate and stress and tension and respiratory rates that go through the process. I believe it'd probably be through the roof. It's a big, big, huge, scary, stressful process that we go through. And, and if you can help buyers get a better understanding of what that process might look like and remove some of the barriers, remove some of the friction points, remove some of the fear, you're going to have a client for life. And you can do this very easily from your desk, just like I am right here. Zoom makes it very simple. They have a registration link. Even if you do a webinar, you can, you can just, it creates a, a registration link. I can send it out to my database. I can send it out to my partners. I could send it out uh, uh, via social media. Like I a whole host of different ways of marketing this out, but somebody could just clicks on the link and they say, yeah, I want to go to the buyer center. And it could be something to do, you know, with, with the home buying process. It could be, you know, what's going on with missions, like all of the different ways that you could think of. How do you negotiate in today's market? How do you find the perfect home in the perfect place at the perfect price? Like all of the things that you can think of, you can do events. Now, here's what I really love about these events is that number one, you've got very, very simple, very, very easy, and it's all information that you already know. I can now get my lender partner, my title partner, maybe my inspection partner. Like I can get them to be involved in this. I can do these regularly and I, I can do one of these one a week. No problem. All right. And because it's on Zoom, it's being recorded. So it becomes an evergreen product that I can actually send out to my buyers. Can't I? Now I've got a recording that I can send out to my buyers. Anytime I have a buyer who says, hey, listen, I'm interested in buying. I could literally provide value to them in advance of me meeting with them. How cool would that be? Hey, listen, you know, Hey, Doug, I see that, that you, 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 we're going to have this meeting or we'll meet on Tuesday of next week. But, you know, I recorded a couple of videos and did some trainings. And if any of these might help you, like that's amazing. I'm providing value with it. 
So I love those. And then of course you've got referral partners. Y'all, your referral partners are a huge piece of your business. I'm talking about broker to broker. I'm talking about legal lawyers, et cetera, CPAs, your preferred vendors. And I want to talk just for a second. We talked about earning trust. You have to earn their trust too. See, one of the hardest things, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's something I, I talk to brand new It's about it. Like, Hey, listen, you're going to get out of business and, and you're, you think that your mom's going to use you and your sister's going to use you. But here's, here's the truth. It's going to be easier for you to go out and get new business than it is going to be to serve your mom and your sister, because your mom and your sister know you and they remember when you wouldn't get out of bed and you smoked too much weed and you partied too much and you flunked out of school. That's the, that's the person they remember. So you're going to have to earn their trust. Well, the same thing for your referral partners. Your referral partners are putting their booties on the line, their reputation, their brand on the line when they recommend you. So you've got to be thinking and earning their trust always when it comes to like, like them referring to your business. So when it comes to legal, how can you best serve them? Well, y'all, every attorney and every sort of specialty has a different need. Ask them, pick up the phone and call your legal professionals that, that you know in your marketplace and say, Hey, listen, Sally, I, I want to be your go-to real estate source. I want to make sure that I'm providing you with value too. What can I be doing to help you? What information can I be providing to you so that you know I'm the right person to take care of your clients? They'll tell you. Same thing for legal. Listen, we talk about it. When the market goes south, what happens to marriage it is? Do people get more married or less married? They get less married. It sucks. It's ridiculous. We talk about it in Married for More about whether or not your 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 marriage is battle tested. Like this is why we talk about it because you've got to be able to go through the ups and the flows. When 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 stuff goes bad, like there's a lot of consumer debt. In fact, there's more consumer debt right now than we've ever seen in the history of the planet. Well, listen, when people start losing their jobs, unemployment rates are going up, inflation. It is already up. Wage growth begins to soften. Like that's a problem. People become, it becomes more and more difficult for them to pay their bills. Okay. So, so there's going to be some legal issues there. One of the ways they can get out of that is by taking advantage of the equity that they've got in their homes where they're selling alt. They become renters. Okay. All right. Um, CPAs, vendors say, by the way, um, a little conversation about your preferred vendors. Your preferred vendors like being your preferred vendors because they like getting business. Okay. So let, let's talk about mortgage for just one second. Your mortgage professionals love when you set up business. When's the last time your mortgage favorite loan officer set you business? I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Oftentimes what I hear is that they aren't. Oftentimes what I hear is that they're sitting back and they're collecting, but they're not giving. Okay. So it's time for you to have better conversations. My expectation is that I'm going to send you this and you're going to take great care of my people. But I also expect that you are going to send me clients and I'm going to take great care of them. That's a relationship. All right. One more interruption. Hey, listen, you guys know I'm working with salespeople and leaders all over the country, all over the world for that matter. And we're all focused on one thing. How is it that we have the greatest impact and change the most lives? So here's the thing. You don't have to pay me to be your coach. I'm going to give you my phone number. I want you to text me any question you've got. I promise you I'll answer it. Just try me. 833-338-0078. Ask me whatever you want. I'm in this for you, not just with you, for you. Let's get out there and crush it and change some lives. So seven levers. Um, I want to talk to you about the reactivation because I am coming across a lot of people that think that they've got 25 buyers in their funnel and they don't. So it's time for us to reactivate these folks, reassess, and let's figure out like which ones are real, which ones aren't. One of the ways you would do that is you would, you would call them and you would say, Hey, let's, let's get you reapproved. Interest rates have changed, the dynamics have changed, the requirements have changed. Um, and as a result, your buying power has changed. So let's go ahead and get you reapproved. Okay. The other one would be updating what the winner strategy is. We're going to talk about that here in a minute at a, at a deeper level, but there is a 
there is a way, there's a strategy around what winning offers are and which aren't. There's a strategy behind how we win uh, buying a property and all of the ones that aren't winning. They, they probably don't have lots of strategy. So to know what that is, and that will change based on location, that'll change based on price point, that'll change based on location, like all of these different pieces to it. So once you understand what it was that they were looking for, so now I say, okay, well, yeah, I'm in a traditional market and I'm in this school district and it's a high demand school district and a high demand price point. I'm now, I'm going to be able to have a conversation about, hey, the winning strategy is this. Here's the kind of inspections that are deemed reasonable by the sellers right now. Here's the kind of pre-approval, pre-qualification, proof of funds, whatever. And here's, uh, here's what we're going to have to do from an offer standpoint. In this marketplace, things are selling for 106% of list price. In this market, it's 97%, whatever, whatever it is for that market. But to be able to have that conversation with a buyer so they can determine whether or not they are truly a buyer in today's market. Okay. Um, Re-review your contract line by line. We're going to talk about this again here in a minute, but this is where you go through and you say, here's the listing agreement. Line by line by line by line by line. Just to show exactly that this is complex and that this is serious and that these are contracts. And with these contracts come a, a requirement, a duty of service to the client and that the seller has an agent, a professional representative that's going to be fighting for their benefit. And then here's the purchase and sale agreement. And here's all of the information that needs to be in there. And this is serious. This is a contract. And, it, and you can see that if somebody else is represented and they're fighting to make sure that the seller gets their best deal, and then we have this purchase and sale agreement that's pretty clear, right? Somebody's going to win. And the other side also needs to be represented professionally. Otherwise, they're at a disadvantage. So I'm going line by line by line. Now, there's another reason, obviously, that I'm going to go through the buyer's representation agreement. The other reason for this is obviously the, the recent news media, et cetera, about the settlements and the NAR and the commissions and all of those things. It gives us an opportunity to answer those questions that will become questions. Even if they haven't been asked yet, let's go ahead and solve them in advance. Okay, that's that's earning trust. And then I'm going to update the buyer's wish list. Going through every single thing, I'm going to get them to sign by representation agreement. And then I'm going to go through the MLS and I'm going to update their their property alerts. Right. And we'll talk about that here in a second as well. All right. I'm going to take a break here for one second. Any questions? Yes. Um, on that buyer's guide, you were talking on the on Google business page. Put that on there. And, and you gave an address of someone to talk for a service. And I missed all that because I was taking notes. Missed all that about taking service. Here you were talking about buyer's guide, and when on yeah. that in that sector, you said you should uh, pay this forty fifty dollars a month for this oh. bis. Yeah, so the guy buyer's guide is just something that you would post. You would send it out to your email at an exam as an example. Here's a buyer's guide. Um, but what you're doing is it, it's it's a lead magnet, right? It's a lead funnel. Click on it. So like it's, it's information. What, what I'm going to do on the social side is I'm going to turn that into an ad. And this would be Facebook right? or, or Instagram where I'm actually turning it into an ad. I'm spending 50 bucks a week. I got you. Yeah. I'm still funnel. And our marketing team has some buyer guides for us. Is that correct, Todd? And they can even be customized to you. <gasps> Say it isn't so. Okay. No work, gosh. Let's keep going. Then. Well, last time we were going to keep going. Reactivating buyers. Okay. Um, here, I'm giving you guys a QR code. This is my buyer phone interview worksheet. Okay, so I'll give you a minute. Well, I'll just talk over this. I think I wrote down and yeah, the questions. Yeah, I wrote, wrote them down. So I, can throw. Um, I think that this is 
the most underrated part of sales. What I, what I find is that salespeople that aren't salespeople that don't have the certainty and the confidence, what it is that they're doing, they will oftentimes spend 90% of the time talking and 10% of the time listening. And really what they need to be is spending 90% of the time listening, 10% of the time talking. And if you will conduct your phone interview properly, the buyer is literally telling you every single thing they need from you to be your client for life. You just have to ask the right questions and you have to listen with the intent to solve their problems. Okay. And I want to go through on that. And you will notice that I have explanations underneath that. So it's not just the question. It was important for me that you understood like, like, why am I asking these questions? So I'm just going to run through them. The number one question is, what is your motivation for buying and selling? Well, that's great. What's my motivation? Well, what am this and I'm trying to really identify the emotion behind it. Like, is there urgency? What's really going on here? Right? So what is my motivation? Am I really committed or is this just, I'm dabbling. I'm just considering the idea. Right? Um, have you been pre-approved for a mortgage? This is obviously a big one because it obviously illustrates and demonstrates motivation and commitment, but it also gives you the opportunity to make sure that you you get that checked and you get them with your loan officer. Now listen, if they say, yes, I have, still get them in contact with your loan officer. I'm a big fan of second opinions. Every single one of us has done any number of transactions has had a situation where they, their, their loan officer said they could do something that later on they couldn't do. you got to have a plan B when it comes to your mortgages. So make sure that they get a second opinion. Make sure that they, and it, it can be clear. Hey, listen, I've already approved, already ready to go, already working with Sally Joe, but by like in the off chance something bad goes, we just want to make sure that we have a relationship. Okay. Uh, number three, what are your must have features in a home? This is all about non negotiables. Okay. What I'm trying to do is sit through it. Now you're, you're going to laugh because you're going to see through my entire process. I think I counted five different times where I asked the question, well, what is it that you want? And what is it that you need? And the reason we do this is because we jokingly call buyers or liars. Well, buyers aren't liars, right? But what they're doing is they're sort of processing as they go. We start off with the, this is my wish list. This is everything I ever wanted. And of course, they're all non-negotiable. And then as they go through, what you'll find is that the real non-negotiables will begin to bubble to the top. And oftentimes, they'll add some additional ones, right? But, but your goal is to find out exactly what they want so that you can give it to them. Right? I think that's the whole point. Okay. Uh, number four, what's your ideal timeline for moving? This is a big one. Very big. Right? If somebody needs to be moved in time for school, they want to be in a school district, like, Time's a wasted, and we got to know these things. So timeline is is, is critical. Um, what are the neighborhoods that you're interested in? Okay, obviously location narrowing down. What type of property are you looking for? Um, so clarify the kind of listings we're looking at. Um, what is your budget range? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some uh, some magic questions here in a minute. But but this I love talking about budgets. Uh, this one is your very first stab at. Okay. And, and most of the time, buyers are not going to tell you the truth. So this is the first of many times that you're going to get through this. Okay, but but you know you're, it says you're, you're it's a clear budget helps select properties all this stuff. Great, love it. Uh, how'd you hear about me? One of the biggest mis missed questions of all time. How did you hear about me? You need to know. Well, I saw you on social media, or Sally Sue really spoke highly of you, or I googled it, or whatever. I I, I picked you from your photo. What are your expectations from me as your real estate agent? If you don't know what the expectations are, I don't know how you're going to meet them. We've got to get clear on what the expectations are so that you can provide that exceptional level of service that we all talk about. Um, are you working with another agent? 
we've all been taught that this is a requirement and yet it oftentimes get met, gets missed. What I, what I follow is like, if you have to do something more than twice, it requires a process. The reason it requires a process is because you want to make sure that you do it properly each and every time. And you want to be able to leverage, outsource, automate, if you will, hand off, delegate some of these duties to other people. Well, you better have a process that's built so that you can do it because you can't clone yourself. Yet. This is how you do that. So I've got this, these questions. I make sure I don't miss anything. If somebody says, well, yeah, I am sorry, that gives us the the ability to ask, well, you know, have you signed anything? Is there exclusive relationships? Um, what's your plan B? Number 11 is what's your plan B? Love this question. You got to dig in. Well, what do you mean? Well, if you don't buy the home, don't buy it in that period of time, what's your plan B? If they don't have a plan B, that illustrates the urgency and the commitment level to buying a home. If they do have a plan B and a plan C and a plan D, well, it's, it's information for you to better understand it. You can always check in so that you have a uh, call of milestones that we've got to hit in order for us to continue to move the sale along. Have you bought a home before? That's big. Listen, it, you, you don't, you don't want to talk to a, a tenured experienced uh, home buyer, uh, the way you would a first time home buyer. And you don't want to talk to a first time home buyer the way you would uh, a real estate investor. So better understanding what their experience and wisdom is around us will help you a lot be able to modify the way you speak to them in a way that actually doesn't create fear and uncertainty, but creates confidence and certainty. Uh, what's your biggest frustration in the whole buying process from the past will tell you everything that you needed to know that they didn't like from their previous agent. Number 14, do you need to sell your current home before you buy a new one? Two things that checks. Number one, it checks the box of, hey, uh, is there a listing here? Or is there a referral that I could be passing along? It also tells you where they are from a financial perspective because that may play into the way you write offers and, and you develop your strategy for getting an accepted offer. What's the most important thing that you're looking for in a real estate agent? Again, we're just trying to deduce what it is that we need to be for them so that we can get them to choose us. This is all on the phone interview. Um, how do you feel about renovations? You'll see I'm setting the stage for something. Just stand by. Understanding their willingness or lack of willingness will help you determine more precisely what we're looking for. And can you tell me about your lifestyle? This is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is especially important in the resort markets, but not only in the resort markets. If we learned anything from COVID, Lifestyle is very important, both lifestyle outside the house, but also lifestyle inside that, like kids and activities and pets and, you know, all of the things that go into the lives that we live, your home is ground zero for. So better understanding all of those things. Okay. So, so, so you can see there, I think the last point I have on that, is you scheduled the appointment. For that. Um, I, in sales, I believe that you never leave one appointment without scheduling the next Say that again. You never leave one appointment without first scheduling the next one. It reduces the number of phone calls. It, it, it reduces the ghosting effect. It keeps the process moving forward, which is our job to create momentum and progress, moving their goals forward to accomplishment. If we can help that maintain, then, then everybody wins. Okay. Any questions on that one? Hey, sorry for the interruption, last one. Hey, it's about that time and we are doing business planning events all over the country. And I wanna make sure that you have your absolute best year ever. The people that go through our business planning on average make over $250,000 per year. And if you're looking to do that, if you're a sales professional, text me at 833-338-0078. Just text me the town that you are in and I will send you information about the business planning event that we're doing in your area. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, um, next step of the proven process for buyers is to get down to business meeting. And you know, this is, this is get down to business. So this is not at a coffee shop, I guess is my point. Um, this is at your office. 
Um, if you don't have an office, then it's at their office. Um, if they don't have an office, maybe it's at their dining room table. If they don't have a dining room table, then maybe you are renting an office space. Like, I don't care, but this is a business meeting. Um, and you don't do business meetings. Uh, this is, this is like, we've got to have focus. We've got to have internet reliable, like those kinds of things. Okay. And so I walk through 10 step, this 10 step buyer presentation with you. This. Okay. So step one is you review the wish list. Now at this point, we've got a wish list. We've developed it for our, our phone interview. We're going to review that, that wish list. And then we're going to do a bit of an assessment. All right. And the assessment is going to be, well, here's what you want. Here's what you need. And here's the budget that you have. Okay. Yep. That sounds good. So now we have clarity and we've got alignment. Right. So I reviewed the wish list. And then I've gone into the assessment. So here's your wish list, wish list, and your, and your budget. Do they properly align? And then I'm going to go straight into the contract review. Remember when I was talking about the reactivate the buyers, same thing here. But what I'm saying to you is that we need to muddy the waters. We need people to understand that this is complex, that we need to, we need them to understand that the stakes are high, that the risks are high, that, that this could literally cost them their home. This could literally cost them hundreds of thousands, in some case, millions of dollars. This could get people laid, you know, in court, like this is a big deal. These are binding agreements and we're playing with people's lives and money here. Okay. We have a listing agreement. Yes, I'm going over the listing agreement with the buyers because I want to make sure that they understand exactly what the duties are owed by their agent to them. So they understand that they're at a disadvantage if they don't have one. And then I'm going to go through the listing agreement, or I'm sorry, the purchase and sale agreement. This is the point where we're going to be talking a little bit about strategies. And you know, this is what we're going to need to do here and there, et cetera. And then I'm going to go through the buyer's representation agreement. Now to make sure I answer every single question known to man, because again, what we're trying to do here is make sure that when would we find the right property for them, that we're not having to go through these line by line at that time, speed to lead. We've got to move quickly. The other thing of course, is that I want to make sure that I'm, I'm showing them value as we go along. Right. All right. Number four, pre-approval lender meeting, same thing. If they've already met with the lender, that's fine. Let's go ahead and get them introduced to yours. We want a second. Uh, next is your MLS review. Now the M MLS review is literally pulling up the MLS, plugging in the criteria, plugging in the, 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 the current budget and having them take a look at what they see. Now, oftentimes what they want, what they need and what their budget is align perfectly and it's all wonderful. Sometimes they don't. Uh, sometimes they're delusional. Okay. And so we've got to make sure that we work through that. Remember what I said, buyers are liar. I'm going to give you two questions. These are the magic questions. It will help you really fighting tune what the budget really is. Okay. And in, I, I want to make sure that you understand you ask them in this order and, and there's a reason for that because oftentimes what happens is your salespeople, they're like, okay, John, but you know, I, I appreciate that it's $500,000, but like, come on, like, what could you really go to? Like, what's really, you're, you're just arguing, you're just telling me that, but like, what's the real truth? <clears throat> that is an adversarial relationship and you don't want that. You are the assistant buyer. So the magic questions are, so. If I found a property that met all of your needs, had the right bedrooms, had the right bathrooms, like had the right square footage, was in the right location, all of the things, but it needed to be updated to be the home of your dreams, the home that you really wanted, how low would you actually look at as an option? What's the lowest price you'd be interested in looking at? And they give you the answer. Oh, huh, well, that's interesting. By the way, some of them may say, I'm just absolutely not interested whatsoever. I, it's got to be turnkey. Awesome. You got the information. 
And then you get to, to, to ask the follow-up question. All right, so if I found the perfect, I know you said that we, we said that our, our budget's 600 pass house, but I found the perfect home. I mean, uh, the forever home. The one that had the perfect number of bedrooms, the perfect location, the perfect finish, move in, ready to go. Like it's better than you even imagined. What would you be able to stretch to in order to get it? Okay, so those are the two magic questions. If you'll do that, you will really get the information that you're looking for, okay? All right, strategy discussion. What's winning in today's market? That's the pricing, the language, the clauses. If you use clauses, escalations, and that kind of stuff, you're going to discuss what those strategies look like. And then you get to, to number eight, which is the portal setup. Now, listen, I'm a big believer in set it and forget it. I love them. They're my favorite. Um. What I would recommend that you do, however, is I would I would ask that many of you guys are using your your MLS to to do these these auto alerts. Um, I would ask you to do that on your platform. If you do it on your platform, there's a couple of things that happen, and we're, we'll walk through real fast. But number one, it's yours, and so they see the value coming from you, not from some multiple listing service. Okay, and what you're really trying to do is you got to get them away from Silk. If I'm being honest. You've got to get them away from looking at Zillow because Zillow's just trying to steal your customers. Okay. So, so if I could set them up on my portal, I'm going to do that with them right there. Okay. So boom, I'm going to pull up an arc in our case, pull up uh CBIQ and I'm going to go in, create the contact, create the auto alert. We're going to create the portal. I'm going to give them the username. I'm going to give them their, their password. We're going to set it up together. The third reason that we do this is because at two o'clock in the morning, when they can't sleep, they have the ability now to go into that portal and make adjustments to the criteria. Like maybe, maybe somebody is thinking that they're about to get a raise. Maybe somebody's thinking that they're about to get a bonus and they go in there and like, you know what? I'm going to look to see what a house, a hundred thousand dollars more. Might be. Now you're being given all of that information, but they're being able to do it on their own at two o'clock in the morning without having to lean on you. Does that make sense? All right. Next, it's time to get a signature. So now you've proven all of your value. You've, you've shown them exactly what it is that we're doing. You've got them all set up and it's time for them to commit to you. It's time to get married. Right, you're going to review and approve the buyer's representation agreement, and they sign it. Once they've signed the agreement, and this is a natural progression. You all are salespeople. You know exactly what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. Well, this is the when we schedule our tour appointment. This is when we schedule that appointment. Again, we never leave one appointment without scheduling another. Any questions on that? All right, the exceptional tour. How many of you want to go and you would take buyers out and you would take them on an average tour? Nobody? How about a below average tour? How about a decent tour? No, you, you want to take them on an exceptional tour. We're creating exceptional experiences. But I'm going to tell you right now, exceptional is intentional. Write that down. Exceptional is intentional. This stuff doesn't happen by accident. The reason I'm taking you through the proven processes, and by the way, this is a compilation of a bunch of processes that you put together to make one huge monster process. But the reason is because there's intention behind it. In order to create a great experience, I need to be intentional about what that experience looks like. So I want to take you through how I do, would do the, the property tour. Now, I scheduled the appointment. So let's, what is today? Today's Wednesday. So I scheduled the appointment for Monday. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to follow my proven process. And I'm going to pull this document out. I'm going to like, okay, schedule properties. I know a lot of you are like, hey, look, it says go. It says uh, lockbox. I don't care. Call the seller's agent. Y'all, exceptional 
is intentional. I'm going to call and I'll be like, hey, Heidi, you have this listing at 123 Banana Street. Can you do me a favor? I want to show the property between 10 and 11 on Monday. Can you make sure that the lights are on and like the, the home's all ready to go? Now, you may be like, I don't want to ask. I don't want to put Heidi up. Listen, Heidi wants you to sell this house. I promise you, she wants you to sell it. I have seen the perfect home be overlooked and skipped because it was not prepared. The last thing in the world that you want to do is take your family into a home that, that you can't get into, the door won't open, the key doesn't work, the lights aren't on, it's cold, it smells in there, the, the, the blinds are drawn, but you know it's the perfect home. But because they don't have vision, they miss it. And they're like, milk, nope, we're out. Okay? That is not good for the seller. It's not good for the buyer. It's not good for either, either of the agents. I promise you, you guys are properly aligned. Heidi doesn't have to be there if she doesn't want to. Although I was always a big fan of letting the seller's agents tell the story. Because remember, if they're any good, they have gathered the information to be able to tell the story about the house. Okay? Now, can I can I tell Heidi, hey, listen, I'm I'm there for 10 minutes. I'm I get a cramped schedule. Please don't screw that. One hundred percent, right? But you guys are working together. All right. Number two, confirm the appointments the day before. That's not just with the client. You're confirming the appointments with the other agents. Make sure that everybody is cool. Again, that's what pros do. Yeah. Prepare your vehicle. You know when you go to Vegas and the car service rolls up and you get in and it smells nice and it's clean and there's waters and they've got like charging ports for every kind of phone and there's like snacks and maybe maybe some vuv chilling waiting for you. You know what I'm talking about? Like that car was prepared for you, wasn't it? Makes you feel good, doesn't it? It was done with intention. That's what I'm talking about. Your car's washed. It smells good. There's waters in there. There's snacks in there. There's pads, paper, charging cords, whatever it is. You, when they got in there, they could tell immediately, whoa, this agent went the extra step. They were intentional at in preparing this vehicle to make sure that it was good for me. Got it? All right. Be early and be ready. I think it was Vince Lombardi. Maybe somebody can correct me on that, but... I think it was Vince Lombardi who said, you're either five minutes early or Amen. If it was Vince, go Vinny. Because that's exactly right, especially here. Uh, Murphy is everywhere. That damn Murphy is everywhere. If there's anything to go wrong, it'll happen right then, right there. Like like the, the stoplight, the person in front of you will get into a fender better. Something crazy. Be early. You need to show up properly. Okay. And so when I say to be ready, being early is part of being ready because we all know that person that comes in, you know, on two wheels, mock four, hair on fire, stressed out, <clears throat> just dropped off kids, just did this, just did that. It's a different energy level. What we want to do is we want to come up and we want to be cool, calm, and collected. We want to be the confident one. And we want to create certainty in the hearts and the minds of the client. And the way we do that is by being calm and prepared. The other part is that you're being judged. You all know that, right? You all know that you're being judged. <clears throat> like when you walk up, they're they're looking, they've looked you up and down. They you they've judged your hair, they judged your your shoes, they've judged your clothes, they've judged everything about you. They're judging your breath, they're judging the way you speak, they're judging are your shoulders back? Are you slumped over? Like everything, you're being judged. Be ready. Show up ready, right? Like for those for those of us that are not beautiful, by the way, you beautiful people, you have a leg up. I get it. You get to cut some corners. For the rest of us, we just have to look good. We got to dress right. We got to have our hair done. We got to be ready to go. Follow? No, no, sorry. Uh, all right. Uh, confirm the situation and desires. Now, listen, I don't know where you're doing this. Sometimes it's in your car. I don't know where you're meeting these people. If you're meeting them at a coffee house, you're going to pick them up um, at, at their, their place of business or, or where they're currently living, or maybe you're meeting at the office. But 
<clears throat> my my deal is always that I want them in my car. I don't want to meet people someplace. I don't want them to be in their car. I want to be in the car together. All right. This is great rapport building time. It's great conversation time. And I learned so much. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to confirm the situation just as I had written it down before. And I'm going to confirm their desire. So the current situation is, hey, we want to have a home. We want to be moved into it in the next 60 days. We want to be in this neighborhood. It's going to be four bedrooms, three baths. <clears throat> We're looking between 2,100 square feet, 2,800 square feet, and our max budget is a million dollars. That's it. Is that still the case? Well, no, actually, you know, we're, we have to move the timeline a little up or maybe it's a little back or whatever, right? But you're confirming those, those desire, details and desire. <laughs> I am old school on providing sheets and papers and maps and all that stuff. And what I'm talking about here is I, don't know, I printed out, I'm going to show you five properties. I'm going to give you five printouts of the property detail, and then I'm going to give you a map that's got it marked off. But folks, I don't care if it's like with a pen that I've marked it off. It, it, like, it just needs to be on a map that shows exactly where we're going, right? But I like the old school paperwork. I put it in a folder, hand it to them. You got pen, fever, ready to go. And then I'm going to tell them what they're going to see. And now this is where I'm going to go through each and every one of those. Hey, listen, this first one that we're going to go see is at Banana Street. And it's this bedroom. And that's, no, no. And then the next one is on Elm Street. The next one is on Main Street. And I'm going to go through those items. I'm going to make sure that they're clear because I'm, I'm trying to create um, some calm, some expectation. Otherwise, they're on high alert. They don't know where they're going. They're kind of looking around. Well, I've changed all of that dynamic because I've told them where we're going. And I told them what to expect when we get there. Does that make sense? Uh, Y'all, this is a big one. I've got to give you proper direction. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read a couple of things to you here. Uh, I was just sort of scribbling down different ideas. When I when I talk about giving direction on assessing properties and providing feedback, um, I, I'm a big believer in you need... You need your buyers to be brutally honest, radical honesty when it comes to looking at properties and assessing properties, right? So I want them to understand that if they don't like it, I we don't need to see it, okay? If, if Heidi should have set that property up and we walk in and, and the entry is just like the, the worst thing that he or she has ever seen, it's just a non-starter and they don't want to see the rest of the property, and you're like, totally, I get it, then don't see it, okay? Like, it's okay. Heidi doesn't want to waste her time showing you the property either. Now, the the uh, if I I reserve as the agent, reserve the, the right to, to veto you. If I believe there's a fix to the entry, but this house is perfect for you, then I'm going to say, okay? So I'm, 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 I'm making sure that we're creating some direction and some agreement. Um, if you get through halfway through the property and you're done, let's just be done. We we call it, okay? Like, this is speed. Let's go through it. We do not talk about the property, about what you like, about what you don't like. We don't make fun of photos. We don't make fun of colors. We don't do any of that stuff. We only take notes because there are other agents and cameras and listening devices surrounding us. I'll let that one sink for a minute. Our job is to find the right property. Don't be surprised when we find it today. That's my last item in that section because I do believe that sometimes people get like, oh, we found it. Well, wait a minute, that happened too soon. That happened too easy. That happened too fast. We've got to think about it. We should do this. We should look at more properties. So what I like to do is go ahead right out of the gates and say, hey, listen, we met for an hour in my office. We went through all of these things. I'm really good at what I do. Please, my job is to find you the perfect property based on what you were telling me. Even some of the things that you weren't telling me, but I could feel from the conversation that we had, I'm really good at this. 
So I don't want you to be surprised when I find you the perfect property today, okay? And they'll laugh and chuckle, whatever, but you planted the seed and it's important. It's an important seed to be planted. Number nine, we talk about, we talk about everything, but we talk about it in the car. So we get in the car, I want to know everything. Hey, what did you like? What did you not like? What did you just hate? All right. Do you, has this changed your, your requirements at all? Talk, talk to me loud and proud. And I'm going to be taking notes because that's going to help me with number 10, which is to edit and eliminate the items that, that we will see or not see. By the way, anybody who's been in the business for a while knows where they got out of the property. One of the properties they showed, we identified a non-negotiable non-starter that existed in a property that was later on in our showing. And so as a result of that input, we were able to cancel that and say, hey, listen, good news. We, we, have, we, we can skip number four now, okay? So edit and eliminate. That's what we're doing. We're trying to, it's a funnel. We're going to get closer and closer and closer to it. Boom. We nailed exactly what it is they want. And then when we find it, we buy it. When we find it, we buy it. And I'm going to talk about that here in a second. But when we find it, we buy it. Right? If we didn't find it this go around, we need to send a debrief email that confirms everything. Hey. These are the five properties that we looked at. Here are the things you liked. Here are the things that you didn't like. Based on this information, I think what we've done is we've said that these are the new requirements that we need to be met. We're confirmed for an appointment on Thursday. I'm going to be setting up showings and I'll get back to you. Okay? That's in an email form to confirm. Any questions about this? Yes, we found it. Yeah. Here's your QR code for the scripts and dialogues. These are the lethal scripts for sales assassins. I'll leave that up here for one second, but I've got to go to the next slide. And there's a reason why I'm sending you guys to this place. Because the sale is not a sale until you close the sale. Now, if you follow this process that we've gone through every step of the way, you have eliminated 99% of the friction points, 99% of the potential objections, 99% of the potential delays. You have literally become the assistant buyer. You've done exactly what you need to do to get your client exactly what they want, when they want it, for exactly the price that they want it. I mean, like, it's perfect it's seamless and yet you're still going to have them say some of these things and you're going to need to know how to answer them and you're going to need to be battle tested and you're going to need to know exactly what to say when to say it, how to say it. and you're going to need to say it in a way that actually moves the process forward. So what would those be? Hey, we want to see more homes. Well, if you go to the seven, if you go to the lethal scripts, there's this, there's a, uh,